Where's my pad? All right. Somebody uh, move my iPad or my tablet and my Bible. How about that? All right. Well, there you go. Amen. Amen. Boy, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. All right. So let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer right now as we continue to go through the book of Acts uh, this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you that we could quiet our hearts. Lord, we might have had busy weeks, things going on in our life, but there's nothing like going and being with your family together. Here in the Bible pages, turn over. Lord, that sweet sound that yes, we could take for granted that you've called us here today. Lord, there's people in the church that have been coming for a while and they're trying to find a church home and there's those who are just seeking out for their first day, just like Joshua, just spying out the land. Whatever the case may be, Lord, Lord, we thank you that this is a home, that this is a family. This is a safe place, as I heard Greg Padgett say, this is a safe place to come and worship the Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, I pray that we would forget everything that's going on around us as much as possible, that we would seek you and your word, that we would continue to open our hearts so that we may hear what you have to say for us today. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Turn in your Bible this morning to Acts chapter 6. There's nothing like uh, getting a pastor to have a week off from preaching and he makes up for it the next week. Amen. And so we've had a good revival. We had families respond around the altar of the Lord. We had some special singing and I'm so thankful for that, and I'm so thankful for everyone that is reaching out and doing what you do behind the scenes. So this morning, I want to talk to you in Acts chapter 6 about everyone needs to be serving. Everyone needs to be serving. Uh, the story is, is the, you know, there's always a harvest field. In fact, Jesus said the harvest is plentiful. Jesus in that context didn't say pray for the harvest. He said pray for the workers. They are few. Now, this morning we're going to talk about everyone serving. And it reminds me of a scripture in Acts chapter 6 where they're having a problem inside the church. And it's okay to have problems in the church. Of course, you just want to solve them. Uh, you want to solve them as best as possible. You want to have some kind of solution. You want to have some kind of way to help everybody get on the same page and serve. And you know, we run into problems sometimes as a church. And you say, those are some good problems. In leadership, you run into problems where people uh, need to be serving. You run into some problems where there's so much ministry going on. There's so many kids coming our way. We just need someone to step out and say, I am willing to do it. Now, will this pastor clean a toilet? I have before. If there was a toilet clogged up, could I come to it and go ahead and take care of it? Yes, I would. Uh, I, I'm just not beneath me. I, I know all those things matter. Everything matters. Uh, you don't do your chore, husband, at home. It's going to matter real quick. Amen? That thing you promised your wife to do, you say, oh, she's just nagging. Oh, the Bible says it's better to be on the corner of a roof than to be in the house with a pretentious wife. Oh, a contentious one. Uh, you know, it'd be better to have just water dripping on your head, drip, drip, than to be in the house with a nagging. No, she is not nagging. We need to make sure we clarify that. If you keep telling her you're going to do it, it's not nagging anymore. It's called a concern. You gave your word you would do something. Now my wife will watch HGTV and she thinks and looks over at me. Well, you should try that. It ain't going to happen. I'm not gifted that way. I'll just tear your house up. That's just the way I am geared. Well, thinking about Aaronim Judson, a missionary. He graduated from college and seminary and he, said he received a call from a fashionable church in Boston 
to become his assistant pastor. Everyone congratulated him. His mother and sister rejoiced that he could live at home and with them and do his life work. But Judson shook his head. My work is not here, he said. God is calling me beyond the seas. To stay here, even to serve God in this ministry, I feel would be only partial obedience. And I cannot be happy in that. Although it cost him a great struggle, he left mother and sister to follow the heavenly call. Judson's churches in Burma had 50,000 converts. And the influence of his consecrated life is felt around the world. You say, well, Matt, God has not called me to be an international missionary. Dear friends, we're about to have a sign put out as you're going to the car on the uh, right side, going to the fellowship hall, the parking lot. The front side will show you where to go and directions to get to the church. But on the back of it, guess what it's going to say? You are now entering the mission field. Whether you go overseas or whether you stay in Okatee, Bluffton, Hardyville, Ridgeland, Hilton Head, wherever you live, guess what? You are called to be a missionary. You are called to be a missionary where you are. You say, well, pastor, I'm not ordained. You are called by God if you're saved. God didn't save you to sit soaking sour. God called you to serve. God called you where you're at in your place of occupation to work for the Lord. God might have called you to be on a council. He might have called you to be on a homeowners association. Well, those are fun. I bet it's like going to the DMV. I mean, he might have called you to some kind of capacity, but at the end of the day, God has called you to do it with all your heart, with all that you are. Some might be looking for a title. The Lord is looking for a servant this morning. Jesus, in fact, said, you, some would say, well, Matt, what is your verse for ministry? What is your philosophy of ministry? I know when people say that, they're wanting to get about 10 bullet points. They want to know this, that, or the other. There's nothing but Scripture. Jesus said in Mark 10, I believe 49, He said, I did not, or it might be 45, He said, I did not come to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. That should be your philosophy of ministry. If you are serving the Lord to get recognition here on earth, you're not doing it the right way. But if God elevates you as He did Joseph, then boy, is it good to be serving the Lord. God's looking for people that will get dirty in the work of ministry. Let me just tell you, discipleship is dirty. It takes time when you invest in people. You can't just save them and send them out the door. They need to be grounded and rooted in the Word of God. They need to be rooted in God's Word. What we're going to learn here today is not the apostles were above serving tables. They were not above it. And by the way, women are important in the church. They are very important just like men are. They have been called by God, saved by God, gifted by God. They are by God sent to serve. We don't teach here at May River Baptist Church that women are doormats and men are the leaders only. No, in fact, we teach that everybody needs to be serving the Lord. And in fact, we see Adonai Judson did this. We know the Apostle Paul. We know a lot of other the apostles. Now let me just go ahead and clarify this before we get to the scripture. That people that are called to obey God and serve Him, listen to this. It doesn't mean you won't falter or fail along the way. You learn from those mistakes. Uh, don't tackle, you know, my little signs up here, okay? And don't bring them down. I'm just messing with you, honey. I love you. I know you're trying to see. But no, in fact... What I'm trying to tell you is, sometimes you can't plan it good enough. You can have something happening and be at the mountaintop in your spiritual life serving the Lord, but then you get a call and someone's committed suicide. But I know this for sure. In the good times of ministry, in the heartbreak of ministry, God has called us to enter into the sufferings of Christ. 
That means a child's diaper that needs to be changed. Guess what? You could sit there in the nursery and pray for that baby to come to Christ. I laid my hand on every one of my babies and prayed, God, bring them to Christ and they're yours. Do with them as you see fit. And at times I have to go pray in my room, Lord, forgive me for not being a father like I should be. Forgive me for not being a pastor like I should be. But please, God, don't rob people of their salvation because of my failures at time. Because I believe failures are not final. We look in God's Word in Acts chapter 6 and we see, first of all, complaining happens when ministry is neglected. Look in verse 1, it says, Now in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by all the Hellenists, because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. And so we see here, something arose, a problem. And guess what? They had to find some kind of solution. Uh, some churches, not this one. We don't have deacons fighting here and trying to jock for position and fighting over this power struggle and everything. That's not happening here. But I tell you, it happens at churches. Uh, do you remember why deacons are called? To put down a conflict, not to start one. We need to realize the deacons were called, the men were called to help with a solution. And that solution called to be serving. Serving in a capacity to fulfill all the needs. There's people that come to this church that have moved far away. Oregon, New York, California, Pennsylvania, wherever it may be, they moved away from a lot of what it seemed to be family. And they're here now. And they're looking for another family. Well, this is that kind of place. And then what happens? Uh, a, a man dies and, and there's a widow. They're not abandoned here. They're not abandoned here. If you don't get a call from these women, something's really wrong and you better contact the pastor. They'll call them before I ever get out the phone book. Before I ever get the directory. Before I ever... Oh, so-and-so's already called me. So -and -so. You don't have to tell people to check on widows here. They know it's their God-given ability to do so. They're checking on the widows. And they've got widows that need other friends. And they get them involved. Dear friends, if you want to get isolated, if you want Satan to have a heyday in your life, then go ahead and isolate yourself and not come to church. He will have a heyday with you. He will work in ways in your life. You don't need the church. You could just go watch it on TV. You don't need fellowship. But Hebrews 10 says, Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as some have. So what I know is, I can be having a horrible week as a pastor. But I can walk into God's house, and it's not that my identity is in preaching, but I can just go and see that somebody needs a door open for them. I had to cry on the beach a week ago. I saw someone with their grandmother. And I started thinking, mine's gone. Appreciate people in your life while you have them. You never know when it's their last. These widows are important to God. They're important to Him. And God is going to use the disciples to come up with some kind of solution. Because the good thing here is... The disciples were multiplying. Guess what? The membership at May River is multiplying. Guess what? We got some more arms to lock with to fight the battle of spiritual warfare and for the kingdom of God reach the least evangelized place in South Carolina, Bluffton, South Carolina. Someone just needs to know they are loved today. Let me tell you the love of Jesus Christ will never fail you. But second of all, we see complaining happens when God's word is neglected. Look in verse 2. Then the twelve summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, Is it not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables? 
You say this seems very prideful of these twelve to say that they don't need to serve tables. No, God called them as eyewitnesses of Jesus Christ Himself to what? Share the gospel. You want to go to a church where everybody's angry at one another? Have you ever been to one of those churches, by the way? They just seem like, I mean, here, I tried to do announcements at the beginning of service. It takes 30 minutes. I had to shout over people's head because everybody's loving one another, hugging one another. But I've been to church, they just scoot up the door fast, don't even say bye. Because they're mad at each other. It's like you got two political parties on each side of the aisle. I mean, it's just something else. But what I have discovered more than now, when God's Word is not getting preached faithfully, the sheep turn into wolves. And they start devouring one another. That's what happens. It's a famish from the Word of God. If there's something that's going to build this church up, if there's something that's going to help us grow in Christ, it's not because the pastor can preach the stars down from heaven. It's not that the pastor is going to knock one out of the park every week. It's because God's Word is involved. When God's Word is involved, the sheep are getting fed. Sheep are getting fed. Listen, when you go out to eat today, when you're full as a tick, and you need a wheelbarrow to take you to the car, you might be in agony for a little bit. But when you get home, maybe get in that recliner, whatever you go watch on TV or take your Sunday nap, I don't know what you do. If you tell me you take a nap, I'm going to call you. But uh, you're just stuffed. You feel good. When the sheep are full, they are grateful. God's Word is what's going to fulfill us in the church. And so when it's getting neglected, of course, discipleship cannot happen. You could do a lot of philanthropy. You could give a lot of people money off the streets. But what people need more than ever, Jesus said, the poor will always be among you. They need the Word of God. If there's something going to change somebody, it's going to be God's Word. Number three, Complaining happens when widows are neglected. It says in verse 3, Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we have point over this business. What was happening here is the widows, excuse me, were getting neglected, and they need some people to be consistent in their serving. You know what I'm saying? They need some people to be consistent in their character. But consistent in their serving, meaning uh, I might see you two times a, a year. Well, that's not going to be consistent serving. Uh, and also, let me just tell you about serving that's consistent. When you don't burn out your volunteers. If somebody's stuck in the nursery for two years without somebody helping... Guess what's eventually going to happen to those volunteers? They're going to quit. They're going to get tired. They're going to burn out. But what if we came up with a plan for the nursery? What if we came up with a plan that someone would just serve once every six weeks? So a month and a half goes by. You don't have to serve to a month and a half. Because I'm going to tell you, that person back there in the nursery, the person back there in children's church, they need to hear the Word of God. Now, I'm going to tell you, in the nursery, it's jammed up. you got a flat screen TV back there with the service. So you got this handsome pastor back there you're watching. You're like, boy, I'm, boy I'm, I wish he wasn't taken. Well, I am. No. No. Guess what? You have a camera back there for security. So if anything is ever said, guess what? We can review the tapes. Uh, you have it clean and, and Wendy does a great job making sure everything's organized and clean and taken care of. Your baby is very safe back there. It is nice. We need some more nursery workers. And guess what? We need some more VBS volunteers. We have 65 signed up 
with about three and a half weeks to go. We need some more volunteers during invitation time. You ask why I got the boards up today? It becomes a point directed at the right time that God is bringing us new families, bringing us kids, and we rejoice. Do you know there's people in the church that have been praying, God, send us kids. God, send us youth. Now it's like, okay, now what do we do? We get in and serve. We get in and serve. Guess what we've been talking about, some of the leaders. You know, at 80%, a congregation, when they get 80%, they stop growing. At 80%. What does that mean? People don't want to sit on your lap. So guess what? We're talking about in a year or two or so, whenever, whenever God decides and the leadership decides to feel it's God's will, to build a new sanctuary. We have 15 acres and we're debt free. That's good realty right here on 170. Amen? And so we're going to seize the day, not in a humanistic way, but we're going to seize the day trusting in God His way. So today, if God's working on your heart, please respond in the invitation time. Number four, complaining happens when prayer is neglected. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. We see that the Word of God was getting neglected, but we also have to remember that prayer can get neglected. As Sherry Carroll was singing up here in talking about prayer can get neglected. We better be very careful when we follow the Lord and make sure that our prayer life is prayed up before we make decisions for God's kingdom. We need to be prayed up. That doesn't mean you just have to wake up and pray and you're good for the day. It means you can talk to the Lord all day long. Just don't close your eyes when you're driving to pray. And if you do, just tell me when you're on the road. Number five, we see that complaining happens when God's power is neglected. God's power is neglected. He said, then saying, please, the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Perminius, and Nicholas, and a proselyte from Antioch. We see here that God's power was just working on these people. They have been studying them for a long time. Just as Moses was looking at Joshua and Caleb, he was working them up into that position. They were people that were trustworthy. And by the way, just because deacons are called to serve doesn't mean that deacons can't teach and preach. Stephen preached a sermon that killed him. So don't think it's just about pouring out some mulch, wiping, wiping up some stains. But I tell you, if you're a pastor... If you're a deacon and you can't wipe a table, you don't need to be serving anyway. Number six, complaining happens when delegation is neglected. It says, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. We see that they delegated these tasks over. They entrusted them. They followed up with them. They spent time investing with them. Why did they do that? Because you know what? You need somebody to replace you. If you call this pastor and say, we can't have this meeting because I can't be there, you're not doing your job. Jerry said, I can't be there. But Henry's going to teach tonight. That is delegation. That is raising up leaders. That's what we need to be about. Moses didn't understand it. Not too many people want to listen to their father-in-law. But boy, he did. And he gained some valuable wisdom. And Moses delegated tasks and formed other judges because he was just wore out. But then when he did that, everything worked out. Everybody was getting their case heard. Everybody was coming to the judges. And so Moses learned something about delegation. Number seven, Complaining happens when multiplication is neglected. Multiplication here in verse 7, we see that the word of God spread. And the number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. And a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. We see here that multiplication happens when disciples are being 
brought up as a church. You can have a lot of numbers. You can have this, that, or the other. You can have fancy nursery. But if you're not making disciples, you're not doing the great commission of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He told the church in the Greek is the command, make disciples. Some would say, no, it's go. No, it's make disciples. And we're about making disciples. The worst thing that can happen to a pastor or to a church is someone comes and joins the church and goes out the back door because they have not been fully discipled. You in here that's been in church a long time, it is your responsibility to come alongside these young men and raise them up. Call them up. See how they're doing. John Trotter does that, and I talked to him. He said, how you been doing, Pastor? Uh, what's going on? Anything you need to pray for? You know what? That's the kind of people you need in your life. You need someone that's going to get in your face and say, how you doing? You need some prayer? I love you. Come give a hug. You know, you need somebody in your love that cares for you. You know, I was in the car business for a while. He said, oh boy, you're about as low as a politician. I didn't have to lie to sell cars. I did good. But listen, let me just tell you this. They would tell us to send birthday cards to our clients. We sent birthday cards. I said, oh, birthday card. He said, believe it or not, they don't even get cards from their family, some of them, on their birthday. But they get one from their car salesman. Guess what that's going to do? Make an impact. We need to stop trying to make ministry so hard in our mind and just do what those little things are. Sending a note, sending an email, calling and leaving a message. Those are very powerful. And you say, oh, those are just small things. I need to, you know, be like Stephen, you know, full of the Holy Spirit and killed on my first sermon. Well, that sermon was great, but the offering wasn't good that day. (laughs) Or was it? The Bible is we're going to see Jesus stood up and was watching it. It was full honor of what Stephen did. So today as I close, and I know we ran over a little bit due to all that was going on, but we can spend four hours on a NASCAR race. We can spend four hours on a college football game. But I'm going to just tell you today, we need to be serving. So if God has been speaking to your heart, And you say, man, I'd love to serve VBS 9 to 12. Man, count me in. I don't know what you want me to do. But I'm going to be a body and I'm going to do whatever. That's what I told Sharon and them. Hey, I'm just going to be a body. You tell me what to do. Shannon and I will float around whatever you want us to do. We're there. Uh, Some of you, you know, maybe say, well, I'm not of the age where I feel that I'm going to be comfortable serving in the nursery. Okay, I get it. It's not a guilt trip today. It's an invitation. But for some of you, you say, I could serve once every six weeks. You know what it does to Beverly? It brings her out and lets her get to sit beside her husband and worship together on Sunday morning. You know, whatever God has called you to do this morning, I have a Sharpie up here. I have some slots for the nursery and some slots for the VBS. You know what? I surrendered. I didn't know what he was wanting to do with me, but guess what? He's doing something with me. He called me to ministry. For you, you might not have the title of pastor, but he's called every single one of you to ministry. Some way or somehow. Johnny May, she spent a long time here in ministry, and I know Robert and some other people help out in music. You know what? Her back wasn't doing so well, and guess what? She said, okay, I'm done. But you know what? She keeps coming here in her pain. And it hurts. But she's here. She's with her family. And you know what? For some of you, you just need to call this your home today. Somebody in here doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Savior. You know what? You just need to get saved. For Matt McAllister, it was in the Anderson County Detention Center 20 years ago. But God can save you no matter your past. No matter what you've been through. You say, well, I didn't have that kind of past. Some of you just didn't get caught. Let me tell you today. No matter your skin color. 
no matter your nationality, what city you came from, what state, what country you came from, God loves you the same this morning. And you are welcome here always. Amen. Let's go to the Lord and pray. Y'all please stand. Heavenly Father, Lord, I'm just so amazed at the people that already serve here in the church. And those that maybe have just been straddling the line a little bit and saying, you know, I don't know what I, but today I, I might can do that every six months. I mean, every six weeks. And I might can do VBS for that week, uh, June the 13th through the 17th. And I could serve from 9 to 12, do something and help out. Lord, you're bringing the nations to us. Let us be faithful today. God, work on the hearts. Let them respond. For joining the church, for joining your family as a new Christian, or coming down and signing us for saying, you know what, Matt? I'm all in. I'll help. God, you have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.